What's up guys, his and her grow. Showing you some of this dank chem dog right here. Got frost rails. Oh, you'd smoke that, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that, that's the flush. This paleness and curl, that's the flush. You know, don't worry about that. Does that look like my damage? Don't mind that. It's not my damage. All right, guys, this is uh, this is flush. This is what the flush looks like. So this is, this is a chem dog full of mites, like everything else in this room. Um, so we've been trying to get this update video for you guys so we can talk about the problems we've had uh, with what we thought were broad, mite, broad mites, but the more we've looked at it, we got like a better microscope and they look a lot more like uh, rusted mites. So still part of the same family, still, still the same. Still just as bad. Just as bad, same fucking problem. Um, so yeah, so both bad, but anyways, that's kind of what they look like. They look more like rusted than they do broad mites. And so we just want to talk about experiences because, you know, looking online, there's a lot of stuff on forms and everything, but it's hard to find, you know, you have to go through 50 pages and everyone has their own thing that worked for them. And so we just wanted to show like what the damage looks like, what we've tried that works, hasn't worked. Um, and Natty G, if you got off your throne to watch our video, uh, we did get some Guardian mite spray, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, we do want to show kind of what the damage looks like. And, and this room, we... Honestly, I'm surprised it's still alive because we haven't really been in here. We just like filled up the reservoir with some RO water and the timer like waters them a minute a day because it's just so depressing to come in here. But yeah, we're going to just tear this stuff down. I'm going to cut it all up, put it in trash bags and, uh, and burn it because we don't want to sell this to anyone and I don't want anyone to be smoking fucking mite infested weed unless you think that's, I guess it's like protein powder on a joint, right? Little protein powder in your joint. You guys want some protein yeah, powder in your joint? It's kind of ironic because um, I think ever since we started this back up, uh, I was really looking forward to um, tasting some of the Kim Dog, just because that's you know sisters with the OG headband. Um, I got the Obama over here. And the stuff I like, so the Sour D. So I always love me some Sour D headband, um, Kim Dog, or some OG. So finally. You know, we got some of the Kim Dog through the friend, and that's what caused the problem. How ironic is that? And we were looking so forward to tasting it. And um, yeah, we will be smelling it in the form of a bonfire. Yeah. Um, this is the Obama right here, not the Kim Dog. This is the Obama. Dog. And this, this looks Obama good, looks so much better than, I'm sorry to say, most of the Obama that I've seen in the dispensaries. This is mite infested Obama. This is mite with uh, Obama with uh, root. What is it? Mite root additive. <laughs> it's like good shit. So, anyways, yeah, we're not gonna smoke this. We don't want other our patients and other people to to smoke this, obviously. Um, so yeah, so there's uh, you know conflict of interest. Very sad Because it is like a bunch that we're throwing away here. A but bunch. it's just it's not worth it. You well, know? no, you know what? You know we say a bunch, but honestly, it's pretty stunted. So yeah. They aren't fully really filled out. I mean, we had what, like, they have 10 more days technically, I think, is yeah. what they were supposed to, they are supposed to run to the end of the month. Um, so, they they might fill out a little bit more, but yeah, they're just, they got so stunned from that mite damage. Anyways, I guess we should just talk about that first, wasting time here. All right, so, this is common, like, you start seeing these big claws here uh, when the mites are getting bad. Obviously this is like not a good stage to be at, um, but if you start seeing this, uh, this can be obviously, you know, nit nit nitrogen toxicity, but it can also be broad or rusted mites, okay? And if you're seeing just really any kind of deficiencies and you've tried adjusting your nutrients and nothing's working and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? There's a chance it could be broad or rusted mites. There's a, a good chance. You're not going to be able to see them with the naked eye, okay? So like this leaf probably has a ton of them on there, but you, I mean you can't see shit on there. And um, uh, you need to get a microscope. Uh, so at least, at least, uh, I don't want to focus. At least 40x. So that with the 40x you can see the eggs. You can maybe see the mites if you get lucky and you stare at a spot long enough and you see a little bit of movement. But if you really want to see uh, see everything, you need at least 60x microscope. Um, we got one that was like goes from 60 to 120 handheld with a little LED light. It was like 10 bucks on Amazon from Carson or what? Some company that starts with a C. Works great. It's perfect. You can see all the little fuckers on the bottom of your leaves and see them everywhere. So you need that to diagnose it. You're not gonna be able to see it with the naked eye. Um, if you have them, it's it's a serious problem. These are not fucking I, spider mites. So okay, so. It, it, 
I think when they're in the veg stage, yeah, like everything shows up as like deficiencies of some sort. I think what should have been like the ring and like the determining factor for us to kind of think that it wasn't a deficiency is when we started finding nugs exactly like that. Um, I think when, when we started getting these plants into flower, like they were just um, growing their little pistols and growing out and it almost seemed as the ones that were on the bottom branches not in the direct sunlight um, they were growing out but they're growing out like looking kind of burnt yeah so like, like almost falling. like they're they're maturing already yeah. but early on in the flower cycle like they're getting the red hairs that are kind of getting oh, there's another one sucking back in like that yeah too. yeah and they're just hard like they they harden up they're not fluffy like uh, it's really fucking hard to see but okay I mean so this bud. Right here, and then there's one right there. Yeah, so this one is, I mean, it's, you know, my infested, but it looks okay. It's still kind of fluffy, mm -hmm. a little bit. Sure. But then, like, oh, yeah, yeah that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you guys this one here. If it... You know, one day I'm going to learn how to use focus on this camera, and you guys are going to be so happy. All right, so you can see that. It looks like it's, like. Burnt. Like. Burnt, hardening on the edge. I don't know if you guys can see how the round, the parts of the bud just look like kind of hard and solid, like a, like a skin of like I don't know, like a, a toad or something. It's just, well, like sure something how... dehydrated it, like sucked all the moisture out of it. Yeah. So that... yeah, so that is super mite infested bud, is what that is. <laughs> super mite infested. So that's what we decided. What, what we were seeing, and um, that's what kind of prompted us to like. Yeah, to look, and then yeah. with a big shout out to Remo and all of the people over there, because they're the ones who we talked to about our nutrient problem, and they like first thing they said was maybe it's broad mites, and that's how we discovered them, and they were like super helpful in helping us figure out this problem. So a big shout out to like him and their team over there. They're very nice people. Um, so I guess treating the broad mites. Let's get to it. Uh, so you're gonna need a fogger. Unless you're in a small, very small grow tent, you know, where you can actually use a sprayer or a rag with your solution to cover all the leaves and all the surfaces, you're going to need a fogger. Um, if you catch these things late in flower, you're pretty fucked. There's not a lot you can do. Um, there's some you can do, there's things you can do to mitigate it so they don't get as bad. So this really, have, we gave up on this room, so they, this is a wash, we, so these have been like really fucked. But there are things you can do to at least mitigate it that will help, um, but you're probably pretty fucked. And the reason people say just start bleach everything, start over from uh, seed is because they are fucking hard to get rid of. This is like, you will wake up and you will pray for spider mites. You're just like, why can't I spider mites? I want five spider mites again. What happened to spider mites? Where did those go? But no, these things are vicious, so they don't give up. Um, so the first thing we tried, MET52. MET52 works great. Uh, I think Drew Boy mentioned it. He said they blow up. I actually looked at uh, some leaves after we had sprayed to see, you know, how much is killed, not killed, whatever. And they, they do actually look like they blow up a little bit. So that's a pretty cool feature of MET52. Um, again, we didn't use anything super toxic. MET52 is probably the most toxic thing we use, but it's not really toxic. It's just a fungicide. Um, but that is, uh, that's what we first used. So that worked really well to definitely knock them back, slow them down and hurt their numbers. Did not fix the problem, okay? Especially this late flower, that, that was not gonna work, um, but it did help knock them back. Uh, in the veg, same thing. We got all the new growth back, everything started looking really good, but it did not, did not kill them completely. So, we sprayed that four times. And you need, the number one thing you need to do when you're fighting these fucking things is be consistent. You have to have a schedule. Like even though all, Perseverance. This is going to be an uphill battle. This is not going to be a fun time. This will test your patience. You will come in your grow room with a fucking can of gasoline some days. I'd like, be like, fuck it. I just burn the thing down. But um, it is all about consistency. So the reason, even though these all these sprayers or whatever, Green Clean or Met 52 or Guardian Mite or whatever, all this stuff says it kills eggs. The reason they have to spray every three days is because that it doesn't kill all the eggs. So you're basically trying to keep up with the population, the, thing, the ones that are hatching, make sure they die before they get to the advanced stage in their life, which is like six days in or so, five to six days in, where they can start uh, breeding again and laying more eggs. So you're just trying to, every three days you need to be spraying. Whatever you're using, every three days you need to be spraying. All right, so that's the number one thing, consistency. Second thing, once you start spraying them, you have to come in here, obviously we haven't been in this room in a while, but 
Every day you have to come in, you have to pull off what looks like the dead growth, obviously. And then there'll be some leaves that aren't super dead but have the bad, like, uh, curl to them. Um, see if I can find one. But anyways, you need to come in every day and just start picking them off because they are, you'll see with your microscope, they will be riddled with fucking eggs and mites and you want to just try to, to get rid of as many eggs as you can, okay? So, number one, consistent spraying schedule. Number two, you're in your room every day cleaning up the extra shit you can. Anything you can get rid of to help like clean out the insides a little bit so there, uh, you can make sure you're getting spray everywhere, which is why you need the fog or atomizer. You need to make sure you're getting a good surface, like a good wet surface to spray everywhere. Um, so that's, uh, that's number two. Number three, you gotta change up what you're using. So MET 52 worked really well, well to knock them back, okay? But they still were there, obviously. Um, then we used Green Cleaner, because we thought, okay, we've, been on, we've gone MET 52 four times now. That's been four different sprays, three days apart. Um, let's go ahead and, and put some uh, Green Cleaner on, because they should be to the point to where they're manageable, all right? Not so much the case. Green cleaner kind of works like a suffocant. Uh, it's supposed to just kind of lay a layer over the leaves and stuff and suffocate out the mites and the eggs. It kills some, but it doesn't work that great. So I would check, you know, I check these things every single day after they get sprayed to look at the different, how the different things we're doing are actually affecting the mites. Green cleaner did not do that great of a job. Um, I think it's a really good preventative. I don't think it's really good if you're trying to deal with the infestation at hand. So uh, don't do that. Uh, then what we did was we tried a heat treatment. So we tried pulling this room up to 115 degrees because they say if you pull it to 115 and you keep it, uh, you keep it there for an hour, it should kill a lot of the mites. But you might have to do that. You know, you might have to do a couple of treatments of that. So that one I would wait like the full five days before trying to bring your plants through that stress again. Uh, the problem with our room is one that is harder to do than it sounds. That is not a fucking. You thought I thought you know we were like well we'll just turn on our lights to uh, you know 1150 watts. We'll turn on the heater. We'll turn, you know, close off all the vents and just let it heat up. And it like, it doesn't even get to 115 so fast. I mean, it got to 100 kind of like maybe in a couple hours, but after that, it was just like, oh, that's some really good curl, my damage curl. After that, um, it wasn't doing shit. It was just, it was just chilling. And then it would go, uh, what was it? Two to three degrees up every hour. So I went to bed and checked on it when it was supposed to be at 115, which it was, and if my calculations were right, it should have been there for about an hour. Turned it off, came back, mites still here. It's, it's hard because the buds are so big now that um, they can just get all up in there, you know? Like all up in there. And you can't, your spray can't get in there. Even though the room is 115 degrees, it's not 115 degrees in the middle of this bud. Um, so that's really hard to do. I don't know if that will work, I had a leaf pulled to the side. I brought that leaf up to like 100, 100, a little above 100 degrees. The mites, they don't like it, they're pissed off, but they weren't dying either. So I don't know about the heat treatment. If you can get your room, you get some space heaters, get your room up to 115 in a short amount of time because the problem with the ours is it took so long that you can just see all of this. These leaves just sweat. The, I mean, we, we wetted down the pots as much as we could before we did this, but these leaves just like, they got so dried out because it wasn't just that 115 for an hour, it was, you know, 85, 90, 95, 100, it was just climbing constantly. So for like 10 hours, it was just super fucking hot in here. And it just killed a bunch of our leaves. So if you're gonna do that, you gotta have space heaters. And I'm not 100% sure how well it really works. Uh, well, depending on where you're at. Yeah, depending on where you're at. So, um, and if you're far along in bud, like you would have to get the inside of this bud at 115 degrees and that's just hard to do. You know, because they're thick. So that didn't work too well for us. Um, the hot water treatment definitely doesn't work. Tried that with some leaves, doesn't do shit. Plus it would be hard to keep your water temperature at 150 degrees steadily, because if you go too much, it won't kill the plant. Uh, too little won't kill the mites, supposedly, but I couldn't even kill the mites with the water treatment. So that did not work for us. Um, then we went to, oh, then we got guardian mite the other day. And we sprayed that, and that's like the, Honestly, the best results that we've seen thus far. Um, all the ladies I took, I took six samples, um, or seven samples from our other room, took some from our veg where I know there were mites the other day, and they all looked dead. I couldn't find a live one, which is like a, the first time I've, that, that I've sprayed, I've been able to come in and say that. So that guardian mite stuff did work extremely well. We just sprayed it last night. 
Uh, but first day, it looks it looks like it really did a good job. Um, I will do probably, you know, we'll do one more update to kind of just finish her off and tell you how it went, how successful we were, but that looks like it did a really good job. So what we would suggest doing if you're fighting this problem, MAT52 works great. We would use, since it's a lot cheaper because Guardian's fucking overpriced, uh, but again, like you're dealing with this, you don't really care what, what it costs. Uh, but you would start with MET52 because it is cheaper and just use that like two to three applications just to like get their numbers knocked down, uh, you know, two to three days apart, get their numbers knocked down, then get the Guardian mite spray, come in then with the Guardian two days later. Again, you gotta keep on that schedule. It's so fucking important you keep on that schedule. And you'll do the same thing with the Guardian mite spray. You'll have your fogger, you're gonna spray down the top soil, you're gonna spray down the branches, you can spray it on all the plant. You just gotta get a nice, even coverage over everything, okay? What we use with the Guardian mite spray, or the MET52, we use two teaspoons per gallon. All right, <clears throat> then that was the first application. We actually, we did that for the first two applications. The third application, we did one and a half teaspoons. Um, and then with the green cleaner, we did the full two ounce mix, but like I said, that really didn't do a whole lot to them. So I would not suggest using that. Um, I think that's a good preventative, but not to fight the problem. Not, at least not at, not at our, our scale. So, uh, so instead of the green cleaner, I would just have the Guardian Mite on tap, <clears throat> spray that the next day, and then that should really finish off what the majority of the population is left. We will, uh, we're gonna spray them one more time with Guardian Mite spray in a couple of days. Not these, obviously. These are going in the trash can and burning. But we will spray one more, uh, one more application of Guardian Mite spray. And then we'll probably use it, it says you can use it every 30 days for preventative, so that's probably the route we'll go. Um, but we are getting, because before we got the Guardian Mite spray, we got ordered Predator Mites. So our initial thought was we're gonna keep these fuckers at bay, right? We use MET-52, uh, MET-52, you know, it would kill the predator mites. So our plan was we'll switch to the green cleaner, which is what we did, and we'll just run with the green cleaner for a while. And then that'll keep them controlled enough to when the predator mites come in here, they have a population that can actually handle in a clean house. Well, the guardian mites spray seemed to work really well, so that's a, just a bonus. Um, but we're still gonna drop the predator mites in here. How those work, you can't be spraying toxic stuff because they will, they will die too. Uh, you can't drop them in when you have a crazy population of brusset or broad mites already. Because they'll eat them, but they just, I mean, if you have like a, they're just swarmed everywhere, you know, some predator mites aren't going to fix their problem. So they're better to, to get after you've kind of knocked down the initial numbers and got them somewhat under control, right? Then you can drop, you know, you start using something organic, something a little cleaner, and then a few days before your mites come, you don't spray anything, maybe just hit them with some silica and some water, and then... <clears throat> Boom, drop your predator mites, and that should clean clean shop for you. Um, but that, so so start with MET-52 just because it's cost effective. If you can afford Guardian Mite Spray from the get-go, then yeah, maybe don't even use MET-52, but I think it's good to use two different styles of, uh, of pesticides, or I guess it's an insecticide or whatever, but um, it's good to switch it up, just so they're not trying to build any resistance. But start with MET-52, cheaper, more cost effective. Go to the Guardian Mite Spray, and then that should finish them, but for some assurance, if you want to, drop some predator mites in here. They'll go around, they'll eat what's left, what they can find. They will, if they can't find food after a while, they will just leave, right? They'll go, or they'll starve to death. One of the two things will happen. They'll leave or starve to death. But it is some extra insurance. Um, so that's what we would suggest doing. A couple other alternatives for if you have, if you're dealing with this in a smaller, like you got veg plants that are tinier, a uh, Medi-Cal grower told us that we could use an ISO, the alcohol 91% ISO, 50% of that, 50% water, and you just spray them with that, wait 20 seconds, hit them with fresh water and rinse all that shit off. Because if you leave that alcohol on them, it, it can kill them, right? So, um, so I haven't, we didn't try that on any of the plants. I did try mixing that mixture of 50% ISO, well 90% above, you know, alcohol, but 50% water, and I took some infested leaves dipped them for 20 seconds, rinsed them off in water, washed the mites. Uh, the first application killed a lot of them, but there's still some alive. I did a second application that killed most of the rest of them. Um, I'd probably suggest doing that at least three times. So again, not you don't have to do it at once, but space it out, you know. Do it one day, wait two days. Do it one day, wait two days. Do it one day, boom. And so three applications of that, a spraying or dipping, um, should work. I didn't actually try it on the plants because the Guardian Mite Spray seemed to work pretty well. Uh, but we probably will. Uh, you know, dip the clones in it if we ever saw something like that. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be a bad thing, right? 
Uh, but hopefully guardian mice rates care of most of it. <clears throat> and what else? Um, is that pretty much everything you tried? Yeah. yeah. Um, as always, not getting them is the best thing. Yeah, not getting them is the best thing. Preventatives are best thing. So if you're using green cleaner as a preventative, uh, that's great. If you can afford guardian mind, that probably doesn't hurt. But I don't think you, if you're just using a preventative, I don't think you need that because um, it is pretty fucking expensive. But not getting them. The number one way to get these things is through clones. So just when you're getting new clones, check them, quarantine them, treat get them. them. Burn them. Don't burn them because you just got them. But yeah, just anyways, yeah, just make sure you take care of them uh, before you put them in your garden. And I mean, like the guy we got them from talks, makes fun of people who have these mites all the time. So it's like the last thing we expected. Kind of, it's so sad because it's not bad looking, bud. But you put this shit under a microscope, you will see these little fuckers like all oh, up in happy. here. It's so fucking gross, and dude, we just do not feel right giving that to people. That's fucking nasty. So uh, hopefully we have a friend that might help us out. Um, so because we don't have anything for this room right now, these things are supposed to be running. Uh, the other room got delayed because we're dealing with the mites, and we didn't want to flip them in the flower till we had somewhat of a control on it. And uh, yeah, it's just like. It really sucks. So we don't have anything really to come in here. So hopefully we'll be able to work something out and get something in here to replace these that'll at least be somewhat vegged, uh, so we can get them into flower soon. But it's still going to be a pretty big hit. It sucks a lot. Um, there's not much you can do about it. So oh, I guess what I was going to talk about is that most people would finish this off. This like look at that. I mean that doesn't look bad. You would dry that out and you'd smoke that, right? I guarantee you. Yeah, <laughs> guarantee you. This happens all the time, and the people just cut it and sell it. Guarantee fucking tea. You guys want to live in this fantasy world where people aren't spraying fucking pesticides on their shit up until flower day and then selling it and then, okay, but that shit is happening, okay? And those facilities, they get tested for pesticides, but they test for a very limited amount of pesticides. So hopefully that's gonna change. They're gonna get more strict on that stuff, but for right now, that's just how it is. And if you don't really think it's that way, then you live in a fucking fantasy world, because it is that way. Um, we're not gonna, we're just gonna take the hit. It's our fuck up. And this shit's nasty. I don't, you know, we don't feel right selling this thing. So, this is all gonna get burned and tossed in the trash can. I guess we'll show you the room when it's all empty. How many trash bags it takes, or these will fill up. How much it takes to cut up the work. Yeah, at least we don't have to trim all this shit. That's a bonus. That's, true. That's a fucking bonus. So, anyways, uh, and then the last thing, if you wanted to go like, if you had a vid problem and you it was early in veg, go you can go the hard chemical route. You can get Avid. There's actually the active ingredient and in that Avid, Avid, whatever it is, is called like something starts with the A, a semethylene or some shit like that. Whatever the active ingredient is, you can find it on Amazon. It's like EC15 and whatever that active ingredient is, and it's cheaper than Avid. Uh, so if you wanted to go the toxic route, you could definitely buy that shit, but you'd have to do that way early in flower or in veg, sorry. That is systemic. Um, it will stay in the plant for a pretty long time, so ideally you do that early in veg if you had a bad problem. So, I guess let us know if you guys have any questions. Um, again, you don't want to be spraying anything in flower, but if you had to, the uh, MET 52, you were early enough in it, you could do MET 52 to start with, a little cheaper, and then just finish them off with Guardian Mite. But again, once the buds get this big, like I sprayed a couple of these with Guardian because I had a little bit left over from doing the other two rooms. I did two plants, though they're already gone now, but I did two of them. And uh, it definitely like hurt the mites, but if you open up the bud and you get in there, there's still ones that are alive because you can't get your spray in there. It's just hard, right? So people who think they're spraying these late in flower when they have rusted mites and they're, you know, they've got them under control, it's not the case. They're not under control. They're just dumbed down to a, a population that's not hurting the plant as much. So it's still growing fine. You know, it's still producing buds. Not as great as it could be, but it is. I mean, a lot of these buds look good. Uh, so yeah, so they're not really killing them. They just think they are. They're really just putting, getting them down to a controllable population. So the answer is don't fucking catch this late flower. Use preventatives. If you do, you know our process. Um, what we'll do this room is we'll cut all this up, put it in trash bags, pull it out of here, burn it. We're going to toss all the soil, of course. We're not even going to try to reuse any of the soil. We're going to toss all the pots because they can hide ant soil and pots. And then... Not that we reuse cocoa anyway. We don't reuse cocoa anyway, so I guess that part doesn't really yeah. change for us. But um, we're going we're gonna to switch into five gallon pots anyways. These are 10 gallons, so that works for us anyways. And then we will basically blow this room with the uh, bleach and water. 
and then we'll mop everything, wipe everything down, bleach and water, and then we will still drop predatory mites in here, and just in case. If they can't find anything and die, they die, but... And fog And we'll fog it. We will, like, this will be fucking hospital-grade clean room when we're done with it. That's for sure. So anyways, let us know if you have any questions. Again, I'll do one more post um, to let you know if anything changed in our process or we didn't actually end up getting rid of them all. But after seeing uh, what they look like today, I think we're on a... We're pretty much one more spray uh, treatment away with the guardian mite to have them done with. And then we'll drop the predators in there, like I said. So if you have any questions about it, please let us know. I will splice in some pictures. Uh, I didn't know I could take a picture with my camera through a microscope, but I kind of was able to. So I'll show you a picture of what they look like. Uh, they're dead, of course, at this point, uh, but they still look the same. And um, yeah, I'll splice those in here real quick. I only have like a couple of them. Other than that, let's know if you have any questions. And look at that. Yeah. So the bottom ones look fucking nasty. They look almost like dried out porcupines. Yeah. Like, and the ones like up top are like frosty. So. So anyways. So yeah. Let us know if you have any questions about this. Um, and we'll gladly help you guys out. And I'll make one more video. Or we'll make one more video talking about if we won. Which is a process. Uphill battle guys. It's been a fucking like month of work. So right? A month? Three weeks? Yeah. Constant battle. fucking battle. You, your patience will be tested. It's not a game. Not a game. All right. See y'all later. All right, guys. So this is uh, the alcohol. These are all dead mites, by the way, because I didn't know I could do this before. This is at a hundred, no, 60x microscope view. So kind of far away, but you can still kind of see them. That's at 120x. You can for sure see them. Again, these are all dead, so they're a little darker in color. Um, but that's what you're fucking looking for. All right. There it is, guys. Trash. Trash. Empty. And get all rid of all this soil and start cleaning this room. And uh, if you're asking, oh, isn't that like a big financial hit? Fuck yeah, it is. It's fucking horrible. But it is the right thing to do, even though... Sad thing is people like sell it all the time. I guess the mites aren't so bad because during the dry-off process, they should kind of like fall off or whatever or go find food elsewhere, but... Still all the shit they get sprayed on there. I mean, and when's the last time you looked at your butt under a microscope? You know, until this video. Now uh, you might go check it out. But anyways, uh, hopefully we'll we'll be able to re reset something in here. We're just gonna get to cleaning. Y'all enjoy your weekend week.